just how many drugs was he on? Like, what are the sort of dosages for those of us that aren't uh, a part of the... Off the top of my head, there was IGF-1, CJC, Ipamorelin, uh, MK677, GH, Winstrel, DECA, TEST. So eight. And that's, you know, just going into the, you know, the the questionnaire of trying to just say this is what I'm doing right now, but I want, I need next level and I need to, you know, figure this stuff out. Now he was trying to figure out how, why all of the GH related stuff he was using was not working because he does, I believe have a unique genetic predisposition that makes it harder to produce IGF one, or it was some of the other drugs he was using that were kind of inhibiting it. But what gives you that sense? Well, cause his IGF was less than a hundred, which is reflective of somebody who is, like chronically malnourishing themselves potentially um, and like a, I don't know, chronically keto dieting, potentially fasting way too much. Like it's not representative of somebody who's in uh, like a growth state necessarily. What makes you think that that is something which is uh, inherent to him and not a byproduct of the lifestyle that he's leading? Ah, because when you're using that much shit, it's really hard to imagine that you wouldn't manually be putting your IGF-1 way higher. Like, there's like he's a smart fucking guy, even though he dumbs himself down on podcasts to come across as more relatable and make it more understanding for um, the people he's trying to inspire or whatever. Because some of the stuff he would talk about otherwise is complicated, especially when it comes to, you know, the, like... I don't know, biomarkers and endocrine hormones and what kind of impact certain foods have. Like he very much dials it down to be as palatable and comprehend and uh, I don't know, like a palatable for the average person. Um, but I don't know, like just the, the low value was something that he couldn't even wrap his head around. Like that's one of the motivations that he was seeking uh, guidance on essentially. Mm. Like why am I on all this shit and it's not working? Well, I suppose that's one of the framings where you could have gone, look, uh, I, I think that there's something physiologically going on here. I've kind of got myself into this strange feedback cycle of taking more drugs to fix a problem, which potentially means that it shuts down production more, mm-hmm. which makes more drugs. Yeah. That wasn't really the nature of the emails. Yeah. That was a part of the emails, but the majority of the emails was... Yeah, it was driving the brand and yes. getting virality. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just, uh, yeah, it would have been uh, more ethical of him to disclose what he was going to do with it and then give the opportunity for whoever he is trying to contact for guidance to decide from there, I'm okay with that in the way you're going to do it versus not. Do I want to be the rocket fuel for this ship that's going yeah. to be stratospheric? Yeah, and it's like obviously problems. you're not the one on camera doing it, but like you're very much providing guidance and endorsing the process that he's doing. That's the first time that I've heard that take, and I think it's a really interesting one. Like that, yeah. That's a really interesting ethical dilemma for somebody to be in. Like If you want to uh, synthesize the smallpox virus so that someone can study it in a lab or synthesize the smallpox virus so someone can weaponize it and send mm. it out into the world. Yeah. yeah. It's, Not yeah. quite the same. But, yeah. <laughs> um, do you believe that he's now on a therapeutic dose of 100 milligrams of test per week? Um, well, it's 120, but even... I would, I, if he doesn't put out blood work regularly, which, well, you know, he has no obligation to, I'm sure people would like it though, so they can know he's, uh, you know, representing the ancestral lifestyle well and isn't walking around with a stressed out liver and kidneys and fucked up markers and stuff. Um, I'm sure he is probably doing something that he believes to be more therapeutic than blasting his face off, but it is, uh, if you're maintaining that physique, whatever you're doing, is clearly not representative of physiologic replacement. Like even guys who are because he's not got smaller. Yeah, like if you're if you're on 120 milligrams, depending on where your test levels land, it might not be therapeutic replacement. Like for context, again, like I've seen the guy's blood work, and it's with some of these levels, they will sustain themselves in perpetuity essentially because of the way the drug is released into the bloodstream. Like it's a long ester and you are not having any dips following a diurnal rhythm through normal pulsatile secretions, which happens endogenously when you have natural testicular output of testosterone. Like normally you would have test levels go up in the morning and they would dip kind of like go up and down, up and down. And you would not have a disproportionately high free T testosterone that is supporting enhanced amounts of muscle mass. Whereas when you're on exogenous TRT, 
even if you have you're training twice a day or you're, you know, getting shitty sleep or you go out drinking or whatever it is, like your levels stay exactly where you want them to. They don't dip, they don't change, and you have a disproportionately high free T. So even though on paper it might look like you're in the reference range, like it might not be representative of that. And that's not to say he is or isn't in the reference range because he's definitely been, like he's def- he's definitely holding something that's unsustainable if he came off everything, put it that way. Yeah, I mean, that was the conversation you originally had with Matt Does Fitness, right? So for people yeah. who don't know, Matt's this big fitness YouTuber who's in really, really great condition, and he wanted to come to you to get uh, the most highly scrutinized um, type of blood work at a cadence that you thought was good enough for him to be able to prove his natural status. Yeah. And uh, the issue that you had, or the, the concern that you had, is if we start to do these tests at randomized frequency and your condition begins to change or the lifts that you've got begin to change or we see some anomalies within the blood results. Yeah. If there's no anomalies and if your condition stays the same, we can be pretty reliable at knowing that right now you are not taking anything to enhance. It seems like liver king's just getting linearly bigger and leaner and drier at the moment. Yeah, I think he's probably plateaued by now. But yeah, in your mid 40s, you don't walk around like that and you don't hold that when you are working out twice a day, you know, have being spread so thin entrepreneurially, having a family to support, et cetera, et cetera. Like, you know, again, he doesn't have that much historical photos anyways to check his progress and like when things, you know, picked up heavily. But like he very much kind of elucidates himself what I think is representative of prior liver king where it's like my cruise dose is this even though you're coming into a like this is me coming to you from square one this was my cruise dose heavily implying i have blasted because you would never say cruise dose if you're not a guy who blasts oh okay if it was just hrt you would just say hrt but it wasn't therapeutic do you believe because he says in the well again i don't want to misconstrue like 0.6 cc's a test could very much be therapeutic like i'm not saying that's high it very much depends on what achieves symptom relief, what your levels, again, like the levels on a piece of paper are kind of just arbitrary at the end of the day. It's about what, if you had primary hypogonadism and you needed TRT, whatever gets you to symptom relief is probably what you need, even if it, some guys need more than yes. what Liver King takes yes. in testosterone dose. But I'm just saying that the context in which he presents it very much implies that previous to even the request for how do I optimize my IGF-1 and take, you know, why is the GH not doing what I think it's going to do? There was, to build the physique where he got, like there was blasting involved. So you believe, because he, he says in uh, his apology that he was natural for 36 years of training twice yeah, a think, day, seven days a week. He kind of, I, I don't know why he put that in. Like he makes it sound like he just started hormones like right at that time. It's like, well, then your physique would have, morphed by from then to now and you know it's just not representative of that mm. and it was just more so the verbiage too because again you would you would never say i cruise if you're if you just started hrt you wouldn't even know what the fuck cruising and blasting is you know it's just very well maybe you would but it's like you would never use that verbiage unless it implies this is my baseline to try and hold on to what i have but when i'm pushing the envelope it's something else. What's happening, people? If you enjoyed that, then press here for the full unedited episode. And don't forget to subscribe. Peace.